2014 World Cup Finals kicked off last night in dramatic fashion. We look back on Argentina's defeat by Cameroon. We preview today's first game for the host Italy. What's the atmosphere like in Rome for tonight's clash with Austria? And what are the Austrians themselves? Is Tony Poles to the man to make the Italian stumble at the first hurdle? And with England's opening match just two days away, we talk live to the England captain, Brian Robson. Good afternoon. So, James, catching up on what's in the press? Yes, this actually is the Salman Rushdie Gazette from the Emirates <laughs> talking about the match last night, which, as you can see, Cameroon are too big a handful for Diego. Gotcha. Lovely. And, Great. And our referee. And friend. our referee is Clive. Now, this is the St. and Greavesy mascot for the World Cup. For a booking offence, we just do that. <laughs> For a sending off, we go, ah! And if it's a really diabolical decision, folks, we go, yeah! Like that, you see. And there's Clive. Uh, right. Clive is Welsh, of course. Of course. I don't know who after. <laughs> right. Well, so after the, all the months of anticipation, the first action of the 14th World Cup Finals is behind us. Yesterday evening, the trophy holders Argentina, Maradona and all opened up against one of the outsiders, Cameron. A foregone conclusion? By no means. Well, here's a free kick to Cameroon. Up goes... A diabolical goal to lose, Jim, by the champions. Oh, not very happy goalkeeping. <laughs> but we've got to Start obviously there. talk about the refereeing yes. and the, refere the, the decisions that the referee took in the yes. game because we're talking about, about two sending off and four bookings. And four bookings, yeah. I, I thought overall, funny enough, Ian, it was a clean game. There were one or two dodgy moments in it. Here's one coming up. I have put it down a lot to the Cameroons not really being able to tackle properly. I think they... Uh, that, that was a little bit nasty, I must admit. Now, this is the first sending off, which I, I must say to Tim, I didn't think no, it was a sending off no, offence. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't a sending off offence. They got tangled up. But he enjoyed it, didn't he? I mean, he quite enjoyed the adulation of the crowd. But well, here's the second one. The same player, Kinesia, going through... Doing well. Gets yeah. past the first hurdle, goes by the second hurdle, yeah. but no chance with this one. I think he'd have got sent off at Twickenham for that, saying, <laughs> let alone the World Cup. I think you've got to argue that. But the referees, I think, are going to overreact to this directive that's been given to them by uh -huh. FIFA to be strict. And it's going to look and put a lot of pressure on players, a lot of pressure on themselves. Uh -huh. And I'm just wondering whether the directive is not a little bit too strong. A couple of the things I, f I think is right about it, they've been told to keep the game flowing at free kicks, don't have players yeah. standing on the ball, which I think is right. Yeah. For players not to do a lapse of honour when they score, which again I think is right, yeah. let's get on with the game. So yeah. a couple of things I feel yeah. is right, but, Jim. But to be told that they might be out of the World Cup if they don't satisfy the authorities, I think yeah. is totally wrong. Too much pressure on them, as you much say. Much too much, yeah. Right, well, now the focus switches to tonight's action on ITV. Beginning at 7.35, you can see the host Italy live up against the team we've highlighted as being a potential surprise, Austria. Now, the game takes place in Rome's refurbished Olympic Stadium. And for an update on how the city is looking forward to the clash and indeed what the Italian reaction was to last night's big kickoff, here's our man in the eternal city. Gary Newborn. These are a selection of today's Italian newspapers and they're all crucifying Maradona. The Italian press, rather like their football supporters, do blow hot and cold all the while, but their criticisms of the world champions after the most sensational defeat for years in the World Cup is, of course, quite understandable. Let's have a look at some of the headlines. La Gazzetta della Sport, the most popular of the Italian newspapers, says Maradona KO'd, Maradona humiliated. Tuto Sport says Maradona ripped apart. And Corriello della Sport says Maradona risks elimination. And they also say Argentina really humiliated. Newspapers are one of the very few things that come cheap in Rome. The Eternal City is certainly cashing in on the World Cup finals. It's become rip-off city. 
Whether it's a restaurant, a bar or a shop, the chances are that you'll have to pay well over the top. Taxis seem to have a supplement for just about everything. One tried to charge me an extra three pounds just because he had a radio. Another doubled his prices after 10 o'clock at night. Some tourist areas are real money traps. The souvenir boys in the Pantheon Square really go to town with their plastic replicas. So 45 is 23 pounds. It was 17 as you saw me. England. Come from England. So you're now offering me cheaper than your friend now. So 30, 30, what's that? Okay, 15 give me 15 pounds. Right. 15 pounds? Yeah. Uh, can I have a think about it? Thanks. The restaurants are also keen to empty your wallet, but at least the sites here are free. Well, it's very pleasant just sitting here watching the world go by and all the beautiful people and having a nice cold beer. Mind you, this is five pounds a throw. There's a three pound cover charge just to sit here. I think though that football's gonna get in the way on this trip. Cheers. It's not really. Meanwhile, there's been an unexpected safety scare at Rome's Olympic Stadium where six World Cup matches, including the final, will be played. Italy's interior ministry claim it isn't safe, despite £80 million being spent on rebuilding the 85,000 all-seater stadium. They say the terracing is uneven and escape routes for the spectators are inadequate, but it's been agreed that the matches can go ahead if the necessary changes are made after the World Cup finishes. The Italian team had their first training session at the stadium yesterday. The major worry for Italy's manager, Vicini, in the opening match is Austria's success at set pieces, and he still has to decide the 11th spot for tonight's team. Two Juventus players are vying for that place up front, Salvatore Schilacci and Roberto Baggio. This is Baggio. He became the world's most expensive player when Juventus paid Fiorentina eight million pounds for him in the spring. I asked him if he had to prove his worth in the World Cup. Baggio says it's flattering to be valued at such a price, but he says he's still got to play well and score goals to justify the incredible fee. One thing is for sure, there'll be thousands of flags at the Olympic Stadium tonight. Italy is preparing to cheer on the team they believe will win the World Cup. But there is a country across the border who is preparing to spoil the party in Rome. Jerry Harrison has been finding out all about the Austrians. A few months ago, Tony Polster was an isolated figure in Austrian football. The Austrian fans didn't approve of him playing in Spain when the rest of the squad were with home base clubs. They said he was big and clumsy, they didn't like him, and the feeling was mutual. For the final qualifying game against East Germany, which Austria had to win, Polster was really fired up. He said he was playing for his country, but against the fans. And a hat-trick proved his point and put Austria into the finals with Polster the hero. But he was so incensed by his treatment, he refused to join in the lap of honour. Here in Italy, Polster, 33 goals for Seville this season, is keeping a low profile in an Austrian squad which has had a very impressive World Cup warm-up with victories over Spain and Holland, with another big goal scorer suddenly emerging at international level. Number 14, Gerhard Rodax, combining well with Polster here to set up the equaliser in Spain. And then, two minutes from the end, the no-hoper who scored 35 goals in Austrian football won the match like this. Apart from goalkeeper Klaus Lindenberger, who's 33, Austria is a young team, perhaps too young. Average age 24, only the Americans are younger. But they're also the tallest, with plenty of midfield players and defenders who can cause trouble in the air, which they certainly did against Holland recently in another impressive win. There's a word in German, the saint would know it, he speaks a foreign language anyway. It's Svecht Pessimismus, running yourself down, giving yourself no chance. It's the typical Austrian approach. Tony Polster isn't like that. That's why he's so successful in Spain and why he can do interviews in Italian saying he'll score against them tonight. The Austrians aren't too sure whether to stick with the old Schrecht pessimismus against Italy or go for Polster and his left foot. Well, James, uh, this is going to be quite a match this evening. I think it'll be a great game. It could be one of the best games of the lot.
very fascinating because the Ayatollahs won't want to, to, to lose a goal, will they? Well, they've always been slow starters, Italy, in yeah, all the World have, Cup tournaments yeah. that I've ever seen. They're very slow starters. Yeah. I think Austria have a great chance tonight to go at them and... and well. At home, they'll be panicking. As you say, they won't want to I'll lose it. I'll tell you it. what, they're 12 to 1, and the old Roonies were 12 to 1 yesterday to beat yeah. Argentina. And Austria have got to be a better bet than, than Cameroon's, really. Yeah. So I, I think it'll be a fascinating game. Uh -huh. uh, it looks good. I mean, Polster will play. It looks as though Radox might be in the buff. I mean, Rodex <laughs> on the on bench. The bench. <laughs> yes. Sorry, yes. <laughs> but yeah. so, but the, as you know, they're my outside tip. Austria. I know they so, are. And a very good tip they are too, sir. It'll be very interesting to look at yes. that one tonight. Right, time for a quick break now. In part two, we have the answer to last weekend's schoolboy competition and another poser for you in which you can win £2,000. But also we go live to the England camp in Sardinia to talk to Brian Robson, so stay with us. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Only Heineken can do this. Funny how things turn out. I wanted to be a dancer, but Mother wouldn't hear of it. Nice girls aren't dancers. And then the war came, and there's me, a dispatch rider in the army. I could still strip a two-stroke engine. Anyway, nice girl that I was, I got married. 2nd of June, 43. Two days leave and a honeymoon in Huddersfield. Didn't impress Mother. Well, neither did Harry till we bought our own place, years later. Talk of things coming in threes. Harry had an accident at work. We got burgled, thank heavens for the insurance, and I was pregnant too. Kids. The other day, my grandson said to me, could a man ever be prime minister? Well, you never know, I said, but probably not in my lifetime. Guardian Royal Exchange. Life may let you down, our policies won't. Drum. Drum. Work. Work. Hard. Drum. High performance toiletries for men. 100 degrees Celsius. So it is water. Where'd it come from? Well, that's the next thing for all you to work out. In 1964, Clive James went up to Cambridge. In this Sunday's Observer, he's going back. Welcome back to the ITV World Cup studio. Don't forget, we have another competition for you shortly, but first we're going to concentrate on the home nation's part in this year's tournament. England's first match against the Republic of Ireland is one you can watch live on this channel. That's on Monday, kick-off at 8 o'clock. The England squad have been in their Sardinia base now for 15 days, while the Irish arrived in Calgary just last night. Now, we can now call on England skipper Brian Robson. Good afternoon, Brian. Brian Hi, Ian. Hi, right? Jim. What was your reaction to the game last night, Brian? Um, delighted, really. All the lads were very pleased with that result. Um, because I think to start the competition like that, it just proves that...